What up, y'all? It's your boy, Fro Thizzle. And today, I'm going to be talking about the latest entry in the VHS franchise, Beyond. So ain't nothing to it, but to do it. Now, the wraparound story this time is called Abduction Slash Adduction, and we're following an alien journalist, so to speak, by the name of Jay, who gathers around quote-unquote experts to give their speculations and experiences on extraterrestrial life. All of the stories that we're following in this movie are based on VHS tapes that the journalist and the other experts are gathering and watching as well and they're labeled under proof. We also have a side story with an Asian immigrant family, and mainly there's a guy, I believe it's the father or the, the older son, and he's trying to gather around his own proof because he believes that the aliens are terrorizing his family. Now, moving on to the first story called Stork. I highly enjoyed this one. It might be either my first or second favorite story out of this entry. To me, this short felt like a mix between The Crazies and Resident Evil, but in a really cool way. There's some nice moments of tension and buildup as we're following a group of police officers scoping out this really creepy abandoned house that we come to find out is kidnapping children, which in my opinion made the short even creepier. We start off with the police officers around the table um, coming up with a game plan on how they're going to storm this house. And we come to find out that one of the children missing is one of the kids of one of the police officers. And as much as I really enjoyed the action, I thought this elevated it just a tad bit for me to make it more memorable. I will say the biggest problem I have with this short is the reveal of the final creature, which I thought was pretty laughable and goofy. I must admit but everything else really worked for me. I, I thought the action was explosive. The subplot involving the children was very creepy. The gore and the practical effects I thought were very well done. There is a bit of CGI blood here and there that I'm not a big fan of, but when the practical effects come into play, I thought they were very impressive. There's even a bit of puppetry here and there involving the final creature. Despite not loving the design and the overall reveal, I could appreciate some of the puppetry that was used for it. And there's going to be a couple spoilers here and there in the review, but I, I do love the death of the final creature. I thought that was pretty satisfying, stomping in its head and a balloon of gore and blood just splashes out. Sounds crazy, but I, I enjoyed the execution of it. The second story is called Dream Girl, and here we're doing something a bit different. We're following a Bollywood director. He's actually at the helm of this short. As much as I didn't love the first half and the overall buildup leading to the surprise and the shocking element of this short, I got to say the, the middle to the finale really got me and I ended up really loving this short by the end. Again, the first half, it was really slow. I thought it was dragging its feet a bit. I'm like, okay, I'm kind of checking my watch a bit. But this short goes 0 to 100. We do have a flashy dance segment that I wasn't a big fan of, but it's involving the main character, Tara, that our paparazzi guys are trying to get personal pictures and info out of. And to me, this short really shocked me because, again, I was pretty bored. And then when it hit the ground running, I was like, whoa, I, did not, I didn't think it was going to take it to 100. The gore in this short is fantastic. It's wonderful. When this short goes into chaotic territory is when we get the true reveal behind Tara. Now, at first, I was like, okay, that's a bit weird. Spoilers, again, she's like this weird, creepy, demonic android or robot, and it sounds dumb, but the violence and the gore that she's inflicting on these people standing by on this film set, it was super brutal, and I'm a blood and gore guy, I just didn't expect this short to really go there, for some reason, because the tone of the first half, I, I was not expecting it. it, it worked for me. Now again, I found the build up to be quite boring, but the payoff, I thought was both disgusting and a joy to watch. We have a really gnarly shot involving our main paparazzi guy, 
after his other fellas have been killed and all the other bystanders in the auditorium, Tara comes over creepy as hell. And she, after promising and saying that she wants to wear his face, she, she cuts his face with her sharp finger, slowly starts ripping off his face. The eyeballs are popping out. Oh man, so disgusting. But I got to say, in my opinion, nine or 10 out of 10 on the gore scale and the practical effects for this part at the very end is very memorable in a very horrifying way. Thumbs up. Now, the third story is called Live and Let Die. And here we're following a group of skydivers that takes their buddy Zach on his first jump. And that's when they see a UFO in the sky with them that ultimately crashes the party. Now, I got to say, this might be my favorite short out of the film because there was a lot of tension going on uh, that I can feel on the screen. It was like I can feel a pen drop before the UFO shows up. And I had no idea there would be any alien subplots or wraparound story with this VHS entry. I was going into this film rather cold. The UFO crashes smack dab into the plane and we see all of our characters falling out one by one. And I will admit it did get to me pretty heavily. I thought this was pretty intense and I thought this was shot very well. I will admit there is a small, really goofy shot of one of them clutching his leg and, and the legs cut off and he's falling in the air. It's very green screen. That was a little bit noticeable, but otherwise the whole plane crash sequence and them falling and our main guy trying to get his parachute and barely landing at the last second on the ground. Spoilers again, but the creature reveal for this film is either going to turn people off or they're going to rock with it. I didn't mind them. I didn't mind the alien design of how they looked and how fast they were crawling and and I did enjoy how they're stalking and dragging away our characters one by one while they're running around in the woods when they land on ground. I will admit, a big reason why I watch films like the VHS franchise is not only to see the creativity that the filmmakers display on a smaller budget, but also the showcase of blood and gore. I have to admit, it's a big chunk of the reason why I'm seated at these kind of films. But I think a segment like Live and Let Die amps it up just a bit in a very shocking or unexpected way. Because we do have a fair share of it, but for instance, there's one shot that really stuck out to me that freaked me out just a little bit. And it's right when our guy Zach crashes on the ground and he's searching for his best buddy Logan. We do see blood spurting off on the side of the camera just a bit if you pay attention, but we're assuming that it's Zach's. The camera tilts over and we see Logan's decapitated head still attached to the parachute and his body is underneath with the entrails still connected to his neck. And I'm a blood and gore guy, but for some reason this shot stuck out to me the most. And it's not even the goriest moment in the film, but I did think it was the most shocking. Moving on to the fourth story, Fur Babies, which is also directed by Justin Long and I believe his brother, Christian. This one is batshit insane. And it did give me Tusk vibes very heavily, the Kevin Smith film. And it makes sense to me that Justin Long is involved behind the camera for this short. But here we're following a group of animal abuse rescuers who target a children's talk show host who's a babysitter and caretaker for dogs. But after looking closely, the team realizes that she's turned some of these dogs into taxidermy style, which has them go undercover to her house to see what's going on, the grassroots of the situation. Spoilers, but it gets super creepy and very disturbing when we find out the lady, the talk show host lady, is keeping humans in cages and transforming them into dogs. Now, this was a super effed up segment that I really enjoyed, and that's coming from a guy who didn't like Tusk really at all. I'm not a big fan of that film, but for some reason, I enjoyed the way that this story executed a similar storyline more. I do love Michael Parks in Tusk. I think he's the strongest point of that film. But back to this short, the acting is very strong from the lady played by Libby Letlow. I believe that's her name, the actress's name. And I thought she did a really good job of being a psychopathic, creepy, you know what. What really stood out to me was the prosthetics, the practical effects that were used to transform these humans into dogs and the jaw pieces, the canine teeth. One that stood out and it's in the finale where the talk show lady 
unleashes the dogs on the animal abuse rescuers. But I did like this segment quite a bit, and it would have been very easy to lose me with the reveal of the human dogs. I'm like, okay, this is Tusk territory. But surprisingly, I really enjoyed it. Speaking of which, moving on to the last story of the film, not involving the wrap-up, Stowaway, which is also written by Mike Flanagan, who I do think is a good filmmaker. But I gotta say, this is my least favorite segment of the film, easily. I, there's not really much that I liked about it, besides one or two ideas that I did think were interesting. And we're following a news reporter that sees a flash of light in the sky. She's messing around with the technology of her camera. She flicks to one of the filters and it exposes what's really going on in the sky. It's like this big extraterrestrial activity going on. Of course, she follows it. She gets really close and she discovers a spaceship. Now she goes inside and I do like this idea to be fair. Like some of this was pretty cool. The inside of the spaceship, the detail that she's giving. And I gotta say, I did kind of like how the ship takes her away were put through a hyperspeed sequence and the reporter does start to deteriorate in a very grotesque fashion. But I felt there was no payoff for the ending of the story. Maybe there wasn't supposed to be, but the only things I liked about this one were some of the details that the reporter was giving, her being taken away. I did think the nanotechnology or whatever that's attached to the roof of the spaceship that heals her cuts, I gotta admit, I thought that was pretty stupid, but that was just for my viewing. The flashbacks of the reporter's daughter that flashes on the screen here and there, I gotta admit, I wasn't a fan of and it did make me groan. In my opinion, really disappointing work from Mike Flanagan, who doesn't direct, but he did write the script. I must admit, I wasn't a big fan of the overall prologue, the abduction slash adduction segment. I didn't really care for how it was shot. I thought it looked a bit cheap to be on the documentary kind of style that it was going for. I know that's a super big nitpick, but it was noticeable for my eyes. The ending was a bit creepy for me, how we finally get the actual proof of the alien walking into one of the, I believe, the son's rooms, and he's pulling out what I believe is eggs from his throat. And the final shot is the alien grabbing the camera and shoving the camera down the guy's throat. So it is pretty weird and gross and random at the same time, but... The shot of the alien walking into the room I thought was a little bit creepy, but still, I, I didn't love the overall wrap-up story or the prologue. Yeah, I gotta say, the ending did leave me feeling a bit cold. But overall, I did love a majority of this flick. Highly enjoyed Live and Let Die, Stork, the finale of Dream Girl, and a chunk of Fur Babies. I didn't care for the prologue or the last story, Stowaway. I'm going to give, gonna give abduction, 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 abduction about a about 4, a four out, of out of 10. Stork, Stork a 9, a nine out, out of 10. Dream, Dream Girl, Girl 7.5 7. 5 out, out of 10 for the, for great, the great finale. finale. Live, and Live and Let Die, die about, about a 9, a nine out, out, out of 10. 10. It is probably, it is probably my, favorite. my favorite. Fur Babies, babies 7.5 7. 5 out of 10. I did enjoy it. Stowaway, 3 out of 10. But for my overall score of VHS Beyond, I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. And that's it, y'all. It's your boy, Fro. What did you think about Beyond? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Is it one of your favorite VHS installments? Is it one of your least favorite? Comment below. Let me know your thoughts. In the meantime, between time, I'm on to the next review. Fro-tober continues on. Bong. Bong.